What's up guys, it's King Daddy D-Mac and welcome back to another episode of Hermit FTB, baby. Oh yeah, playing on the Hermitcraft server using the monster pack. And how's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good, I'm doing pretty good. I want to thank all you guys so much for all the wonderful comments that you left last episode when we were playing around with swords. I learned so much and man... I'm kind of embarrassed a little bit. There, I made a lot of kind of big mistakes. I wanted to just go over some stuff real quick, real quick before we get on with the episode. But anyway, yeah, kind of the biggest thing, all these swords that we made, I was so hung up on the damage amount and the fact that they weren't doing 20 hearts. But you know what? You don't need to do 20 hearts because all those mobs in the deep dark, they apparently are from a mod that gives them double the health of a normal mod, a uh, mob. So, where I was worried about getting 20 hearts, I really only need 10 to kill a normal mob one hit kill, or a player for that matter. So, tell you the truth, all of our swords all will one hit kill a player or a normal mob, which is ridiculous. That guy does 14, this one, the long sword, that does 15 and a half. So, we actually put more modifiers than we even needed to. So, in particular, this rapier is really cool because this guy, since it ignores armor damage, it will always one-shot kill another player. Always! And we could still put different, more modifiers on it, which is kind of ridiculous. So, that I apologize about, but you know what? You live and you learn. You live and you learn. Now, there's another thing. There's another type of sword that's not in the Tinker's Book. It's kind of like a secret sword. And actually, I already have the stuff to make it right here. It's like a secret sword, which is pretty neat. And I wanted to craft it with you guys real quick, just so we can complete that. Now, apparently for this guy, I think you go on to the, the long, is it this one right here? We'll see. You put in that, you put in a full guard, and then you put in the paper tool. And look at that. You get a thing called a cutlass. That is really cool. So we have ourselves a cutlass. I'm going to get this guy all super beefed up and let's just see what it maxes out at. All right. So I have my cutlass. It is super cool, super cool. And look at it maxes out. I put on flux and then all the rest of the modifiers, 504 quarts into that sharpness. So pretty cool. And it does 15.5. It's actually the same, I think, as a longsword. This longsword has the exact same enchantments on it. 15.5. But look, it's got higher durability than the longsword does. So that's pretty cool, but above all else, it's just a cool looking weapon. Really cool, and I, I don't think anyone else on the server has one. So that's pretty neat. Now one other thing I was having problems with, and thanks to you guys, the Thaumium, I was trying to melt it down to be able to make stuff. And look at this, apparently I want to try making a Thaumium blade. Look at that, Thaumium sword blade. Super cool. Oh, we can actually get two. Oh, I'm going to hold this back. So we can have more. Let's make another cutlass. And let's make this guy. Let me get some more paper. Oh, all right. Tool rod, perfect. Let's make another cutlass out of thaumium. And I think the special attribute of thaumium is that you're able to get another modifier higher than normal. So that would normally do six. Let's just let's see. Do I have another short blade in here? Let's make another sword blade real quick. I just want to compare. All right, so this guy gives six modifiers. If I switch this up, see, it's only five. So we can get this even higher. Now, as far as the attack, it's, a, it's only one heart below. But I bet you a whole extra thing of sharpness quartz will make it go even higher in attack. So I'm going to go ahead and make this guy. Is that the Thaumium one? Yeah. So make the Thaumium thing. I'm going to get this guy completely maxed out. And let's just compare that and we can move on with more projects. All right, guys. So I got it. And Thaumium Cutlass, 16 hearts. That's pretty good because my other Cutlass is only 15.5 so that's kind of interesting that extra modifier definitely it's better off doing that now there's one other thing one last thing people are always telling me to use the thaumium and the handles and stuff i have a feeling that's not going to be as good but why don't we why don't we just test it out i have one last piece of thaumium so hopefully the handle is the part the tool rod 
that we want to do it. So I'll do that there. And let's use paper for the other one because I don't have enough to do a handle too. Go boom. Let's go ahead, stick it, stick it in there. Thaumium handle and full guard. And that's that's right, right? All right, it doesn't seem like it's any higher. Let me get all the modifiers on it. And look at that, it's only 15.5. So it ends up using the uh, the blade for, for at least for the cutlass and probably all tools, it's actually the best to use the thaumium. Who would have thought? It's freaking crazy though. And then let's see, durability wise. Yeah, the durability is way lower. Way, way lower. And this one has the highest durability, which mix the two. But yeah, that's pretty interesting. Never would have thought. So anyway, let's dump out these two guys. Let's use the highest level one, I guess. It's not that much of a difference, but you know, it's 16. Hey, how are you going to complain? So anyway, um, prior to doing all these tools, we were messing around with the MFFS and the teleportation. And I wanted to get back to that. So let's head over to our little Death Star. And let's see what we can do. Alright, so here's the deal. Um, we were messing around with using the force manipulators to teleport stuff. Sort of like, let's see if this is still set up right. Bam. And we should be able to teleport this block from here over to there. And this takes tons of energy. I gotta talk quiet because it distorts my voice. Um, tons of energy. Now when you do a small thing, it only takes about 32 seconds, or I guess it's more based on distance and number of blocks. But the problem we're having, I wanted to be able to teleport large structures, like something like our entire base here, or like a lich tower, or something like that. But we just couldn't keep up with the amount of power. Oh, <laughs> that's weird. I had it mixed up. So I asked you guys, how can we get way more of this uh, Fortron stuff, you know, bulked up so that we could, you know, afford to, to teleport these large things. Well, people said, you, this Fortron, it's actually a liquid, which I kind of remember hearing about, but I wanted to mess around with, with you guys to actually see how this works. So I'm assuming it comes out of this guy, which is kind of like the battery the the power supply so let's grab a tank let's throw a fluid duct in fact i'm going to give it two spaces let's grab a tank let's grab a fluid duct and i hope this works all right not going through we got to switch a switcheroo around the settings boom and add some some uh signal whoa that's pretty cool. Oh man, so we can store this up on reserve. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder what other tanks this can go into. I, I grabbed a whole bunch of them. Let's see. Can I put it into a buildcraft tank? Looks like I can. That's sweet. Let's break that. Can we put it into a portable tank? <laughs> yes, it looks like you can. All right, what else do we have? We need what would be like a huge tank. What about these drums from X Utilities? Yep, that works. You know what? I bet you if we did it from uh, from AE, we'd be able to store a whole ton of this. So let's just see if it goes into the fluid interface as well. Throw a fluid interface there. Yep, it's filling up, so that means we probably can store it in the AE system. Now we're gonna have to make, I brought out one of these cells, because for things to work with AE, we gotta be able to put stuff in it. So let's see, with the cell, can I grab it? Can I grab it out of a tank? All right, we're just able to grab it out of this tank. Oh, perfect. I was afraid we'd have to do a fluid transposer. But hey, it works just like that. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. 
in this tank, it takes a while. So I'd like to see if we can do this with AE. So let me let's knock all that out. Let's add in some AE wire. Let's just root this over my shell. Let's root it right over to here. Boom. Is it sucking out? Yep, it's going pretty well. Now how's this guy doing? Is it going just as fast? Look at that. It's able to hold in the power pretty well. Or hold in all that, that Fortron. So we're going to have to pull it out faster. I'm not sure if we should just add more Fluidox to it around it. Hmm. You know what? If it works with AE, it should work with these these guys right here. So let me, let's try this. Let's knock out the wire, or knock out the uh, fluid duct. Let's connect this in. All right. It doesn't look like it's pulling right now, but if we add into the fluid duct, actually tell it, Hold this type of liquid and let's bump this up to the highest setting. Oh, it's pulling faster. It's definitely mm. pulling faster. It's still kind of seem no, kind of seems like it's keeping up. Let's throw in another one. Let's set this also to the flux. Set this also to max. Now let's look at it. Oh, now it's pulling faster than it's making it. All right, cool. I'm going to let this run for, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Let's 10, 20 minutes. Let's see how much this actually pulls out. And uh, whether we're going to need more storage to be able to keep it. And then let's play around with it. See if we can teleport something large. All right, guys. Here we are over in the Cory world. And I think we can do this now. I got a new quantum singularity ring quantum chamber thingamabobber and everything set up. So we should have all of our everything in our AE system accessible to us. We got 23 kilobuckets of the Fortron. Perfect. And I've got this guy set up. Let's just make sure that I have him to the right thing. See if he'll move this. All right, perfect. So it's got this entire thing in there. Perfect, perfect. So let's switch this back. All right. So now this was not before enough. Let's see if this would then be enough to send it over just by itself. We need to make some fluid, let's see, buses. Fluid export buses. We have four here. So you know what? I'm just going to do the full amount into this possible oh you know what i hope it doesn't teleport these that would be no good Ooh, let me fix that real quick all right hopefully this is an easy fix i'm just going to use the block placer go like that go like that and then we just displace it by five i can't remember we want it front i think it was the front Let's try it here. Let's put on the mode again, see what happens. That looks like it's right. Let's just double check. Okay, yeah, that's good. Oh, crud nuggets. Dang it! <laughs> I screwed up the link card. All right, let me go fix that too. All right, so if you don't remember, this is where we had the link card last time. So let's just link this bad boy up again. Boom, all right, it's linked. Let's head back to the Cory world. All right, back to the Cory world. Let's throw our link card right in there. I think this should be good. Now let's do what I was trying to do before. Now the reason we move that is because these fluid export buses here would have gotten away and they would have been teleported probably as well, which we absolutely do not want. So let's put this in, put it to the top setting. 
I'm still a little concerned this might not work, but I think in conjunction with the other, we could definitely get it going. Bam, bam. All right, cool. And then let's get this going on. Bam, bam. I can actually fit in up to two more, possibly. And look at some more ME cable. Link it on over. All right, cool. But I want to see how this does just like that. So anyway, let's let's start it up. And it's going to take a long time. Bam. 341 seconds. It looks like it's keeping up. Oh, those stupid... Oh, crud. Is that right? It's not teleporting anything we don't want. Okay, that's fine. How are we keeping up here? Holy crud! Look at how fast it goes through that. Well, I guess we got the hard part done, which was just to get it pumped in fast enough into it. So, it's definitely keeping up there. Um, I'm just going to keep an eye on this to see whether we run out. I think we'll be able to do it. I think we'll be able to do it this time. So, we'll come back right when it's about finished. It's only just gonna make it. It's spinning so fast now. This is crazy. I think this is gonna be enough to be able to do it though. We figured out a way. Come on, do it. Oh my God. We did it. We did it. Oh my God. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, I can't believe it, guys. You guys are amazing to help me figure this out. <laughs> we went through almost all of our Fortran, just barely had enough. That's crazy. All right, let's move this back to our other one. Oh my goodness, that's so nuts. Let's move that back in here. Let's find out. Just double check that this worked. I can't believe it. Oh my goodness! This is the coolest thing ever. It might be a little off because we, we changed it. Yeah, see how we changed it between this time and last time? But that's okay. That's okay because this would have normally been transferred with that. Oh, I can't believe it. Cross dimension, so far away. Oh, I want to be able to move bases around. Just at will. Oh my god, this is so cool. Alright, I'm super happy we did this. Um, I think our next matter of business, before we can actually teleport large objects again, we have to come up with like a huge power plant for creating Fortron energy. Because you saw this this little this is big, but it's nowhere near as big as what we want to teleport. So we're gonna have to just have Fortron up the wazoo. So let me see how much time we have left and let's start to plan out, if not start working on a Fortron power plant. All right, we got a good bit of time left. Um, before we start producing this Fortron by the bucket load, we really need to find the best way to store it. Um, our drives are almost look. <laughs> We're on our last drive and that's a precise one, so we're actually all filled up. I can't even put any more in. Holy butt nugget. What's our what's our max capacity right now? 81 kilos. Oh my goodness. So we gotta make a bunch more. Um I was pulling up and looking through what all the different like fluid drives are. And the 16's the large wait, is there a larger one? Advanced fluid. 64 yeah the 64 is the most advanced one so let's see and i think that's what we have in here are these all 64s yeah so they're kind of expensive they're not too bad
but I think we need to start looking at all their different ways to store the fluid. Um, as far as those, let's see, tanks. All right, we have all the railcraft tanks. I'm not sure what the max capacity is on those. I think we should make some and compare it. Um, there's this dynamic liquids, which I really don't know what these are. I haven't played with these at all. There's, let's see, those type of tanks. We got the open blocks tank, which we did at the beginning of the episode. I think it's going to be worth looking into what a bunch of these are to really figure out what's the best. So in the meantime, I'm going to, I'm going to make a bunch more of these guys. Let's see. Fluid. 64, 16. All right. Let's make a bunch more of these. Let's make like 10 more. Bam. Hopefully I can craft them all up. Where's my little, where's my monitor? All right. Hopefully that goes okay. We shall see. And I'm going to also, let's see, going to make a rolling machine so that we can start making the other tanks. And I think that would be cool for decoration, have a bunch of different tanks anyway. Rolling machine, railcraft. All right, that's pretty easy. I'll craft one of those up, and then we got to start making those, uh, those iron and steel plates. So let me do that, and we will return. All right, guys, all of our auto crafting finished. Super sweet. Put all the cells in. And look how much we're up to, 147 kilobuckets. It's so cool. Got the rolling machines all automated. They're pretty easy to do. I just have one doing steel, one doing iron. When I request it, it pumps it in. The trick with rolling machines is you got to leave the template in there. And then any excess above the one craft, you can then pull out. I'm pulling it out. I don't think it, it shoots out. I think you have to pull it out. So I have two export buses i could have done normal ones but so rich now it don't matter mm. walrus um yeah so let's go let's check out some of these other tanks because that's what i'm most interested in if these end up being the best i'm just going to craft a whole wall of them let me see where's my book i gotta move my books and get all this portal stuff going on it's a real pain by the way i think i showed this last time gift from hypno the bedrock sword which is super sweet the big thing with that is the looting four that that gives you anywho this guy's going pretty well going pretty strong oh it's almost not keeping up cheesy peats might have to add on another one of those anyway dang it this thing goes so fast let's get one of these tanks going let's see steel grab you grab you how many things? I did three stacks of that and that. So let's do a max size of one of those. I think it's nine by nine is the max size that you can do. All right, guys. So I made the max size tank. Um, I went and double checked it. I believe the tallest you can do is eight. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so the tallest you can do is eight and the dimensions for the width, it can be three by three, five by five, seven by seven, or nine by nine. This one's a nine by nine. So pretty cool. You have to have all the outside borders of it, just like this, be this tank wall. The steel does have higher capacity than the iron. And then you don't even have to, believe it or not, let's just double check this. You don't even have to have any valves on it. But as soon as you finish it, boom, you'll see a multi-block structure. So pretty neat. Um, once this fills up, the data value for this is all stored in right in the middle. That middle bottom block, which is kind of cool. Which I think is that one. Is that right? Three, three, three. Yeah. So let's pop down, put a valve in over here. Now for the bottom, that's the only place you can empty the tank. It's got to be somewhere in these bottom blocks. And it can't, I don't believe, I believe it can't be a corner. Of course, because it's got to be that tank wall. But then anywhere on the sides or the top, you can fill it up. So that's pretty neat. So let's go ahead and do this. Let me get another valve. And bada boom. Awesome. And you know what? I'm kind of curious. Since all the data is done there, um, on the other on the last server, you could use your force wrench to move it. So I bet you can still do that now. And then you can just put it in your inventory and have portable tanks, which is pretty neat. But in any case, let's get this show on the road. Let's get 
this fluid into here. Bam, bam, bam. Let's get you filled up. Set match up. Sweet. And is it starting to go in? Nice. Get all that Fortron. So this guy, it looks like that's the equivalent because that's in millibuckets. So that would be 20 kilobuckets, right? 20 kilobuckets. So that's pretty good size storage. I believe the drives for the A for the AE, the extra cell drives, I believe that is based on, I think it's 16. Let's just double check that. It should be too hard to check. Let's see. Is this one filled up? All right, that one's filled up. So if we gank out all these guys, we should be able to see what the size of just a single drive is. Let's see. Yeah, 16 kilo buckets. Interesting. Boom, 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 boom. So, yeah, that steel tank does store more, but it's only than one of these. I think the steel tank might cost less to craft. I don't know, because this costs diamonds. But in any case, this is by far the most compact. So the steel tanks is cool. I'm going to use it just mainly for decoration. Because that is the cool part. You can actually see that Fortron. Oh, that's so cool. So I'll let this fill up between this episode and next. Um, might make a couple of them. Might make a bunch of them. I don't know. I think we're going to make, though, a factory for producing Fortron. So that we can just do some of these ooh, super heavy duty... MFFS projects. This is so cool. I thank you guys so much for letting me know you can do this out of liquid. Oh, it's just portable power. Liquid power on demand. It's the best. Anyway, guys, any other tips? Any other types of tanks? I'm kind of curious about the, what's it called? Dynamic liquid? Are these any good? Is this even worth looking into? Let me know in the comments. Is this something I should look into for liquid storage? Or does the AE just by far, is it just way more dominant than this is? Is it way better? Any case, guys, thank you oh so much for watching. We'll get on the factory next episode. Help me out with any of those questions in the comments. Grab my helmet. And yeah, till next time, make sure to hit those thumbs up. And yeah, peace out.